So do you feel like you're going in circles sometimes? Well, you are. Earth's orbit is circular motion, along with many other things. Consider any object moving in a circle with constant speed. It undergoes uniform circular motion, like we see in these examples here. Or at least it's going in uniform circular motion for some portion of time if it is an arc or a portion of a circle like we see here. But then we're really only considering it or analyzing it for that portion of time, and so we can still look at it as uniform circular motion. One of the things that you need to recognize is that with uniform circular motion, an object is moving with constant speed, but it is still accelerating. So yes, the speed is constant, but the direction, and hence velocity, is always changing. The acceleration here has a magnitude of v squared over r, and the direction is radially inward, always towards the center. Here's one of my favorite animations for demonstrating uniform circular motion, because it shows all the vector quantities and how they arise. You don't need to know how to derive these, but it is important to understand the directions and meanings of these vectors. In uniform circular motion, an object travels around a circle at a constant speed. The velocity of the object is the rate of change of position with respect to time. This velocity can be estimated by examining the change in position over a short time interval. The instantaneous velocity is then the limit of this estimate as the length of the short time interval goes to zero. Note that the direction of the velocity vector is always tangent to the circle. The acceleration of the object is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. The acceleration of the object can be estimated by looking at the change in velocity over a short interval of time. The instantaneous acceleration is then the limit of this estimate as the length of the short time interval goes to zero. Note that the direction of the acceleration vector is always towards the center of the circle. The magnitude of the acceleration can be determined by noting that over short time interval, the change in the position vector and the change in the velocity vector form similar isosceles triangles. This information then leads to a simple expression for the instantaneous acceleration and the limit as the length of the time interval goes to zero. Notice in the video the reference to looking at changes in position and velocity as the time interval goes to zero. This is really just finding the derivative as you'll learn in calculus. Also notice that the acceleration vector always, always points to the center, while the velocity is tangential to the circle of travel. So what causes the acceleration? Well, a net force, of course. And so the direction of the net force is the same as the direction of the acceleration. And so we look at this expression for the magnitude of the acceleration where we have a centripetal or a radially directed acceleration. You'll see those two, both those notations used. And so it's proportional to the square of the velocity and inversely proportional to the radius. And so it's the net force that causes that centripetal or radial acceleration towards the center. Whether it's part of the normal force that keeps us moving in a circle, or the frictional force, a gravitational force, or an electrostatic force.